Welcome to $100 Plus Mileage, your go-to podcast for learning about New Hampshire legislation that might not make the news, but could still impact you. The 2023 legislative session is coming to a close, but there are still important bills left in the weeks ahead. I'm Anna Brown, Director of Research and Analysis for Citizens Count. And I'm Mike Dunbar, Content Editor for Citizens Count. Whenever I meet someone from another state and tell them I'm from the Granite State, they often say something like, ah, New Hampshire, no motorcycle helmets, right? Or no seatbelts, live free or die. Well, indeed, New Hampshire state law doesn't require adults to wear seatbelts. But the law is not so laissez-faire when it comes to infants. Passengers under age seven must be fastened by a child restraint system, aka a car seat, with specific rules spelled out by the federal government. Now, the legislature is set to vote on SB 118, a bill that would require rear-facing car seats for children less than two years old. Anna, give us a skinny on this bill. Sure, but before I do, let's take a look at the law as it stands. Under current state law, children under seven must be properly fastened and secured by a child restraint system, according to a specific set of safety standards laid out by the U.S. Department of Transportation. The law doesn't apply if the child is 57 inches or more in height. Okay, so little kids don't have the option to live free or die, but maybe that's for the best. What would SB 118 change? SB 118 adds to this law, stating that persons less than two years of age must be properly fastened and secured by a rear-facing child restraint system, which is in accordance with safety standards. The penalty for incorrectly using a car seat would be a violation, similar to a speeding ticket, with a $50 fine for a first offense. Okay, those who don't have children, and I don't, so I very much had to research this, may be surprised by all the distinct categories of child car safety restraints. These include rear-facing car seats, forward-facing car seats, and booster seats. Once a child has graduated from each of these restraints, they are ready to wear seatbelts without additional restraints. Research shows that small children are much safer riding backwards. Most fatal collisions impact the front end of a vehicle. When a child is restrained in a rear-facing seat during such collisions, They are cradled by the car seat rather than being snapped forward. This greatly reduces the risk of serious injury, plus children under two years old have more delicate vertebrae than older kids because they're still converting that vertebrae from cartilage to bone. For this reason, it's a good idea to keep your toddler in a rear-facing car seat for as long as they are able to while still being within the manufacturer uh, size specifications, even if they're older than two years old. All right, it's pretty clear by this point why people would want SB 118 to become law, but their opponents to the bill too. Let's talk about some of their arguments. Absolute opponents. This idea has actually come forward a few times. And so you may think, wow, the science seems to be settled. But as always, there's a debate about, all right, science, yes, but what about the law? And there's an argument that it's not necessary and that maybe the better route is educating parents on the best way to use car seats. There isn't clear crash data on injuries and car seat use for children in this specific age group in New Hampshire either. So some feel that SB 118 is a government solution where there may not be a significant problem in New Hampshire. Others worry about the added expense for poor families. While convertible car seats that can face front or rear can eliminate the need to purchase a special car seat that's just for these first two years, rear-facing car seats are bulky and might mean larger families have a hard time fitting their kids into smaller cars. And ultimately, opponents of the bill feel that Granite State parents should be trusted to keep their children safe. This bill was voted ought to pass by an 11 to 9 majority of the House Transportation Committee. Now it will go to the full House for a final vote. You know the drill, New Hampshire. Do you have an opinion on how your representatives should vote on SB 118? Find out who represents you and let them know by visiting citizenscount.org slash elected dash officials. Okay, Mike, I think we've got SB 118 covered which means it's time for Only in New Hampshire. Hit me with some trivia. Mark Twain once called it an imposing cradle on wheels. Ah, so you're sort of connecting to today. (laughs) Yeah, you see what I did there. The famous Concord coach manufactured by the Abbott Downing Company in Concord during the 19th century became a symbol of America's westward expansion. Abbott Downing's largest customer was Wells Fargo and Company, and the Concord stagecoach remains a part of the company's branding to this day, as we all know. Each wagon was custom-made, and weighed 2,500 pounds. Their innovative suspension system set them apart from the conventional steel spring suspensions of the day. A pair of bullhide leather braces held the carriage, allowing it to sway gently from side to side over rough terrain. 
The cabin could seat anywhere from six to 12 passengers, depending on the model, and was driven by a team of six horses. Today, members of the Abbott Downing Historical Society helped preserve the legacy of the Concord coach through education and restoration projects. This is incredible to me because I definitely would not have pegged New Hampshire of all states as having a real big piece of that sort of westward expansion yeah. mythology. <laughs> but Concord Coach, Concord Coach literally conquered New Hampshire. I thought it was, you know, maybe related to, I don't know, Concord Grapes. I'm trying to think of something else that Concord is named for and nothing is leaping to mind except grapes. Yeah, exactly. It felt like one of those trivia facts that like... If you've heard it before, then you're going to be like, oh, come on, this one, everybody knows this one, but actually not. And I remember finding out about this and being like, oh, you know, seeing the Wells Fargo logo and everything and being like, there's a little bit of New Hampshire there. That's that's so cool. We just like to infiltrate everything and just make it a little granite statey. That's exactly right. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of $100 Plus Mileage, but you can find more information and episodes at citizenscount.org. We'd also like to thank Franklin Pierce University for producing and the Granite State News Collaborative for hosting. Our theme music is composed by me, Mike Dunbar. Lastly, we thank you for giving us a listen and thinking about how you can be part of what makes New Hampshire by the people for the people.